In this video, I'll show you how to set up WooCommerce with WordPress multi-site. Let's get straight into it. But before we do so, let's explore a few practical ways in how we can utilize a WooCommerce multi-site. Okay, so if you run regional stores, then you might want to go with this setup so you can separate the products, the shipping, the pricing, right? The marketing as well to each regional store manager. And then you'll be able to have a high level overview of all the store's performance from one dashboard. This is also great if you got a retail slash wholesale setup. So what we typically see with our clients that use our wholesale plugin. So they'll have the retail site on the main domain and then they'll have the wholesale site on a sub domain, right? Again, this is great because then there's no cross communication in terms of the marketing as well. So sometimes you might have a pop up which says new customers get 10% off and that's aimed at your retail customers. So you wouldn't really want your wholesale customers trying to take advantage of that particular deal, right? So it's just a super simple way to just streamline the process. The benefit of all this is you as a super admin, you'll be able to save a lot of time in terms of management, right? So usually you'll just be able to update the themes and a the plugin from one centralized location and then that change will reflect on all the sites on your network right another benefit is that it allows us to easily sell to different audience and we can also put different controls in place right based on the different regions in which we're selling in for so for example if you're selling in europe you might want to approach things a bit differently to if you were selling in the states right to comply with various different local laws so that's another great benefit of utilizing a multi-site setup. Okay, so before we get started, there's a few things we need to consider. And the main one is how you're actually going to structure your multi-site. So WordPress gives you two options. One, you can use a subdomain. So for example, with my store here, our main URL is go demo site. So if we was to do a subdomain, we could say store one right and then dot our main domain here or instead of saying store one we can say our website and then we can say slash and then store one so you need to take this into consideration before moving forward and which one you choose will depend on your situation so for example if we were going with the retail slash wholesale setup and let's say for example we didn't care too much about the discovery and the wholesale side of things then i'd use a subdomain however if this was more like a regional setup you can use a subdomain domain but to get the full benefit of SEO right I would use a subfolder because Google treats a subdomain as a new website essentially right that's why for example we can go to wordpress.com and we can have a subdomain over there and it doesn't necessarily mean we'll rank highly right because the WordPress domain has a lot of authority but that doesn't necessarily transfer to that subdomain so this is why using a subfolder if you care about SEO might be a better option and with that out of the way let's go ahead and create our WooCommerce multi-site okay and to do so the first step is we need to log into our hosting account I'm gonna log into my cPanel if you want to use an FTP client or any type of file manager you can do so but essentially what we're going to do is we're going to navigate over to our file manager and then we'll find our website all right which is this one and then we're going to go ahead and edit our WP config file and then we'll scroll down and then where it says that's all stop editing happy publishing we're going to add this bit of code here to enable our multi-site, right? So I'll leave a link to the blog post that's got all the code that you need to achieve this, right? So don't worry about trying to copy the code here. I'll just leave a direct link to the code. Let's hit save changes. And now when we head over to our dashboard, right? So our website dashboard, I'm gonna refresh this page and now I'm gonna navigate over to tools and then we'll see this network setup. So we'll click on this. And then as I mentioned before, we get to choose whether we want to use a subdomain or sub directory, right? I said subfolder. Um, I'm going to choose subdirectory. You can choose subdomain if you like. And then here we can go ahead and name um, the network title. Okay, let's hit install. And then now we need to make a few changes. So here it's saying we need to copy this code and it's saying we need to paste it above the code where we put happy publishing. So let's head back over to our file manager here and we're still in that WP config file. All right, so now we'll remove the code that we added and we'll replace it with this new one. And then we'll just hit save. And now we need to copy this code and we need to paste it in our .ht access. 
So let's head back over to our file manager. And then here we've got this .ht access file. Sometimes you might not be able to see it. And if that's the case, you might just need to click on settings. And then you need to click on this option here where it says show the um, files, right? Dot files. And then just hit save. So let's edit this file. And we're just going to replace this. And then we're going to add this code that it prompts us the copyright. Okay, and once that's configured, we just need to log back in our website and our network is pretty much configured, right? So here we can navigate over to the network admin. So we'll go network admin dashboard and then we can create our first site. So we can click sites and then here we can view all sites. I'm just going to click add new. Since I selected a subdirectory, it looks like this. Otherwise, it would be a subdomain, right? So for our first store, we're just going to say store one. And then obviously you can probably re replace this with the regions or based on your particular setup, right? So I'm just going to say store one again. You just name it appropriately. And we'll just click add site. Okay, and that's been added. And we can navigate over to the dashboard of that particular site in which we just added. So if you notice, it's our main domain and then it's slash store. Slash store is essentially a different um, WordPress installation, right? we can just treat it like we would any other regular site. The only difference is when it comes to plugin, to be able to add plugins or themes, we need to add it from the network, right? So to do so, we'll just navigate back over to network admin and then dashboard. And then from here, we can add any plugins or themes. So for example, let's add, let's add WooCommerce. So we'll go plugins and then we'll search for WooCommerce and we'll just click install. Okay, if you click activate here, it will activate it on all the different um, sites that you've got on your network. Okay, so you might not want it. Well, in terms of WooCommerce, since it's necessary for all sites, yes, it makes sense to go ahead and activate it for all sites. In general, let's say, for example, if you wanted to add this particular plugin here, you can install it, but uh, personally, I wouldn't activate it to the network. And the reason being is some regions, they might not want that plugin. And by you activating it, you're forcing them to use it, right? If you leave it um, just in installed but not active so for example here you can see woocommerce is installed but we haven't activated across the entire network we view the individual store so if i go site and then let's log into this store here when we go plugins now they'll see all the different plugins that they have access to so the individual store owner or store manager can actually choose which plugin they want to activate so here i can activate it on this site setup here right so that's just the main difference. Okay, and then we can just go through the setup process. And that brings us to the end of this video. I'll leave a link in the description below to a few plugins that will help you manage your network more effectively.